get here. This urge to stand tall against the opposition, to keep going no matter the odds, to war up and fight to the finish. Where does it come from? Uh, my name is Tom Mustin. Uh, I'm the head coach of uh, Tacoma Boxing Club. Our boxing team started in 1974. There's been a lot of affiliation with the team. Um, my first national champion in 1978 was uh, Dwayne Jameson. Rocky Lockridge, uh, he's out of this team. He's a pro athlete. David E. Armstrong, a uh, two-time Olympian. Uh, well, with Bumpers' this case, he was a pro boxer. And still undefeated, Johnny Bumper. Bumper. The official time, 2.37 of the second round, and Johnny Bumpus is now 4-0. Bad break for Jose Angel Medina. We'll be right back to talk with Johnny Bumpus after this. My name is Johnny Bumpus. My fighting name is Bump City. He went through this program, and so he's giving something back. Oh, I have 367 amateur fights with 16 losses. Then I had 32 professional fights with two losses and I won three goals. Got some good boxers that went on to become world champions. Like Lockman, she became a world champion. My son became a world champion. You know, Johnny Bunker is a world champion. And, and they went on to accomplish a whole lot of things. Leo Randolph, a world champion, a gold medal winner. And the champion is flat-footed. Oh, this, the referee looking, looking, and that's it. We have a new champion. We have a new champion. The third member of the Montreal team to win a world championship. Wow. I must be a representation. Eyes are all around, watching, hoping, teeth clenched in anticipation. The bell rings, it's a dance, poetry, music. Even after the bell rings again, the fight remains. I pattern our program after is uh, Olympic team training. Uh, we train uh, everything we do. It's just like when um, I coached the Olympics in 2000. Stretching and exercises, 20 minute jump rope, and pre heavy bag. Station number two would be uh, shadow boxing in a mirror. Uh, these drills that I set up, so they work partner drills, and they'll do, instead of just two rounds on that, there's uh, six different drills they can, I just put the runs together on a daily basis so they would be in good shape. You ain't sh in shape, a bum will whoop your ass. Huh. Wanna compete, then you can come in and join this team, but I don't have time to just work people out per se, just to get in condition. If I was gonna do that, I'd be doing that somewhere else and they'd be paying big money for it, but we're volunteer coaches. We don't get paid, you know. Emmett and I, uh, Emmett's son started when I, the first year I started coaching. And Five, Lenton came right back and completely dominated. And he landed, as you can see, clean punches. And what he did there was land and then get out of the way so that Curry couldn't get close to him. Look at the crispness of the punches and he was hurting Curry with every shot he threw. When Lenton opens up, he dominates his fight. And then he came aboard as assistant coach and now uh, he's the gym manager. He likes to handle all the dirty work that I don't want to have. Like, with parents and doing that. My thing is I'm teaching boxing and I don't have the time to be 
get my blood pressure up arguing with crazy parents that want this and want that. Like any other parent, I wanted to come down and watch him work out. And after doing that a few times, uh, maybe going on a couple of the, the, the uh, tournaments, and then Tom asked me what I become his assistant coach. The one thing you can't see from outside the ring, the thing that nobody can tell you about, it's the heat. Or like pressure beating down upon me. Like a familiar foe just waiting for me to let my guard down. But it never happens. Uh, it impacts the community because it involves the kids, not only the kids that are in the Boys and Girls Club, the kids that are in the community. It's, uh, kids that are a little bit on the edge of going bad or getting into trouble, it gives them uh, an avenue to uh, take out their frustrations, um, to be, or to go on a national level, to be recognized, you know. Um, Trophies. When I was little, uh, I wanted to get trophies. You know, seeing all my friends get trophies, and I started getting them. Like, oh man, yeah. I like this. The, the, the most talented boxer that came out of here probably was a Mylon Watkins. Uh, Mylon Watkins. We call him Milo. But he had too many demons on the outside. Uh, Got involved with drugs. <laughs> Alan Watkins was, he was above, he was the best we've ever gloved up in here. He lost to Mark Breland to get to the Olympics because uh, he just wasn't living right. Uh, amateur boxing has, has, has uh, fell out of, of, of popularity over the years, over, the, over a few years, the last few years because of uh, I don't know, the way it's being handled, the way amateur boxing is being handled at the top. This is, we struggled this year. We really struggled to get, get down the road, uh, to get to Mesquite. We didn't, like, we went to the, to the trials uh, to try to get a guy into the trials. He's like number two in the nation, but he got hurt. So we went to that, and we struggled to get there. We had a good boxer, a great boxer, one that, has all the natural abilities, eye-hand coordination, uh, has the desire. I had a fight for three days straight and uh, had to win all three days. That'll do whatever he can do to be the best in the world. Harley Quimis, 12 years old, fight at 75.